Well, friends, good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church of Portland, Oregon. We are a creation care congregation, a peace church, and a reconciling congregation. All are welcome in this place. My name is Ethan Gregory, and I'm one of the pastors here. Today in worship, we're joined by our senior pastor, Reverend Karen richards Kwan, our minister of pastoral care, Reverend Andy Oliver, our lay leader, Tricia Peebles, and we're grateful for our chancel choir, our organist, Jonas Nordwall, and our wonderful tech team in the back, assisting with sound and visual and our live stream, and a welcome to those of you joining us from home. Friends, it is indeed Rally Sunday, and we are grateful to see a great many of you here with us in worship today, some of you back in this place, even for the first time in almost two and a half years. And so we are grateful for that celebration. As we continue to celebrate the wonderful fall season ahead of us, we have some surprises or excitements throughout worship today, including new members. And uh, stay tuned after worship, even after the postlude, our children uh, and uh, families uh, ministries have a wonderful surprise music video for us so that you won't want to miss. Sorry, those of you on the live stream, uh, you'll have to catch it another time. Um, but I hope that on your way into the sanctuary or on the way out of the sanctuary, you pick up one of our fall program guides. That is your key to all of the exciting ministry that we have going on around this place in the months ahead. You'll find our upcoming worship series, our upcoming classes and service opportunities, everything you need to know including uh, the beginning of our pastor's Bible study. Myself, Reverend Karen, and Reverend Andy will be starting a seven-week study on the book of Revelation beginning next Sunday during the Sunday school hour. Uh, you can RSVP ahead of time for that online. There's even an option to join us by Zoom. So uh, please let us know your interest and join us as we enter into this exciting uh, and sometimes scary book. Um, but join us for all of that fun. Those are announcements, my friends. And now as we've come to worship this day, Trisha will light the Christ candle, a reminder of the God who is with us always, filling up our hearts and our minds, gathering us in so that we might be renewed once again to go out and into the world, to be God's people, doing the great work of love and justice, building God's kingdom among us. And so with the light lit, let us now stand and offer signs of peace and reconciliation to one another. You gotta, you gotta hold it. Please join me for the call to worship that's printed in your bulletin. If we come simply as we are, black, white, and brown, young and old, gay, straight, trans, and queer, male, female, and every gender in between. If we bring our full selves, our stories, our emotions, our personalities, our strengths, and our imperfections. If we respond to God's nudging, if we accept the call to be the church, if we live as if love abounds all around us and nothing can take it away,
sermons at this time, I invite all of our children to come up and join me up here for children's time. Good morning. Some of us are excited still. We have, we have running going on. Let's wait our turn. Let's wait. I know. I know. You want to have a seat for a minute? There we go. There we go. Good morning. How's it going? Good. Are we excited? What is today? Rally Sunday. Sunday. Today is Sunday. It's Rally Sunday. We're back. Why do we why do we have Rally Sunday right now? What does it coincide with? Um, fall and school. Fall and school. Does school does that does that ring in your ears right now? Yeah. Anybody anybody going back to school? Have you tried that out? Yeah. Yeah. Last week we went back. How's it going? Is it going well? Yeah, we like our teachers. Thankful for our teachers, right? Yeah, some of you get, we get to see our friends. That's exciting. Well, today, as we think about as we think about going back to school and as we continue to worship together, we're in the middle of this series called the the Art of Gathering. And as we conclude it, we're reminded that that we're always doing the work of making room. There's always an empty seat. See, we see space in between us. We can have even more friends come up and join us. And we're reminded of, of these words uh, that the Apostle Paul wrote, that, that nothing can separate us from God's love. And you know what? That's, not, that's even, even true on days other than Sunday. So, so I have a special, a special surprise for you. Some of you peeked in the basket earlier. This is, this is a reminder, a reminder to you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all those days when you're walking up and down the halls of your school, sitting uh, in your desk, carrying your backpack, a reminder that, that God is with you, that you're loved, that the people in this room care about you, that I care about you, Reverend Karen, Reverend Andy, you're loved in this place and in the other places we go. So um, can we... Can we kneel on the rails up here. This is going to require some movement on your part. And I'm going to invite Reverend Karen to come help me with this. Yeah, pick a side. Pick a side. Some of you go over there. Some of you right here. Yeah, take a handful. And if you are a big kid and still back in school and you would also like a fun backpack tag to remind you that you are loved, you are worthy, you are enough. Uh, you can feel free to come up and join us. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass these out real quick. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. One for you. There we go. Excellent. Everybody got one? Yeah, you can tie it onto your backpack. Um, put it somewhere that you'll always see it. You'll see it every single day. And do we, have, do we have any teachers or educators in the congregation? Why don't you, you stand up so we can... This is a prayer for everyone who is in school, everyone who is teaching, working in school. And so... So Reverend Karen and I are going to kind of put our hands out and we're going to have a little blessing, okay? So let's, let's pray uh, and you repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for school where we can learn. Thank you for teachers and thank you for friends and thank you for this place where we always know that we are loved. And all of God's children said, amen. Thanks, friends. And remember, I think you have a surprise for us following the postlude today, right? A special video. And there's choir and Sunday school happening at this moment.
I'd like to share with you all some congregational joys and concerns. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, our Savior, for the Holy Spirit, our Redeemer, and for God Almighty, our Creator. We give thanks for those who will become members of this congregation this day. May we all, together, seek the way of Christ now that we are made beautifully different by their presence. Today is Rally Sunday. We pray for this new season of discipleship. We celebrate our class leaders and Sunday school teachers as they begin their ministry for the year. We pray for our earth under siege from climate changes, especially those suffering with forest fires in the West. Give us the desire and the power to sacrifice for our planet's care and our children's future. We pray for racial justice in our country. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring equity to all aspects of our common life across all races. We pray for Sherry Anderson as she recovers from a heart attack. And we continue in prayer for all others we give over to God's care. In the silence that follows, please lift up your own prayers. Holy and merciful God, we thank thee for those joining this body in membership today. We will forever be changed because of these new members. May we, by the power of your Holy Spirit, be the kind of followers they deserve. May we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be more generous and less argumentative. Not that we disagree more than anyone else, Lord, but when we do disagree amongst our church, as your Bible teaches us we must. May we disagree like the way the elbow disagrees with the foot or the way the brain disagrees with the hand. That is by the power of your covenantal love and we disagree as if we were all part of the same body, unable to escape or leave from each other even as we change because of one another. Teach us by the power of your Holy Spirit the leaving and cleaving of our Jewish ancestors like Sarah and Abraham following your ever-creative and ever-changing call to strike out into the chaotic and majestic world with the good news that God, God, you desire us and the earth upon which we stake our lives. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us together as your body the guts to use our minds so boldly that tradition will forever be harnessed to the needs of the left behind and lonely. Give us together as your body the fortitude to forever bind reason to justice, to bind rationality to hospitality, to bind our thinking to our loving, until we embody your son unafraid and in deep affection with you, with this planet, and those with whom we share its bounty. In the name of the one who was unafraid to love, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Can y'all hear me? Not quite? Oh, here we are. Hello, good morning. I love to see all of the faces that I recognize in the choir, as well as so many that I don't recognize. There was a choir retreat yesterday, and there are some new faces, so I am so happy about that. Now, as to our scripture for today, these verses, these short verses, are the TLDR of chapter 8 in Romans. This is the summary for us. The Apostle Paul is writing this meaty theological treatise to the folks in Rome, and Rome was this center of impressive power. But here in the eighth chapter, we hear even more powerful words. So listen to how the Spirit is speaking through our scripture. This reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, 
We are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in these things, all these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Will you pray with me? O Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. These few verses in Romans describe an incredible truth that bond each one of us together, holding us together in this sacred truth. Naomi Shiab Nye is one of my favorite poets. You may have heard her poem about kindness, which is wonderful, although it's not the one that I'll be sharing today. But a while back, she wrote a story about an encounter in which she experienced a version of the shared world that she cherished, a shared world that she believes that we can all be a part of one in which she saw with clarity the humanness and belovedness of the people who surrounded her, and this was at, of all places, at the departure gate of a flight that had been delayed for four hours. If you've been traveling recently, you know about flight delays. Just getting from Seattle to Portland took me three flight transfers to finally get on the last one of the night. Now she writes that she heard the intercom announcement. If anyone in the vicinity of gate 4A understands any Arabic, please come to the gate immediately. Well, one pauses these days, especially this day as we remember September 11th. She went anyway. It was this scene before her was an older woman in full traditional Palestinian embroidered dress, just like the kind that Naomi's grandmother had worn, who had crumpled to the floor and was wailing loudly. Naomi stooped to put her arm around the woman and spoke in her halting Arabic. But the moment that the woman heard any words that she knew, no matter how poorly they were used, she stopped crying immediately. It turned out that the woman needed to be on that flight for a major medical treatment the next day, and, and she had thought that the flight had been canceled entirely. But Naomi said to her, no, it's okay. It's okay. You'll get there. You'll be okay. Who's picking you up? Let's call them. So they called the woman's son to let them know, and then called her other sons just for fun. They called Naomi's dad, and he and she spoke for a while in Arabic, and of course, they found out they had 10 shared friends. Then she thought, well, just for the heck of it, why not call some Palestinian poets she knew and let them chat with her. All of this joyful exchange took up about two of the four delayed hours, and the woman who had been crying loudly was laughing by then, telling about her life, patting Naomi's knee, answering lots of questions. She had pulled out a sack of homemade mamul cookies these are these little powdered, sugary, crumbly mounds that are stuffed with dates and nuts. And she had pulled this little bag of homemade cookies out of her luggage and offered them to every woman at the gate. Now, to Naomi's amazement, not a single woman declined one. It was like a sacrament being offered to all of these weary travelers. The traveler from Argentina, the mom from California, and the lovely woman from Laredo, they were all covered with the same powdery sugar. And they were smiling. There is no better cookie, said Naomi. Naomi noticed that her new best friend, by now they were holding hands, she had a little potted plant poking out of her bag, some medicinal thing, with green furry leaves. Such an old country traveling tradition. Always carry a plant, always stay rooted to somewhere. 
She took a moment to look around the gate of late and wearied ones and thought, this is the world that I want to live in, the shared world. Not a single person at that gate, once the crying of confusion had stopped, seemed apprehensive about any other person. Each one of them took the cookies. This can still happen anywhere, she concludes. This can still happen anywhere. This birth of a shared world, this glimpse of holy community. Even here, even amidst a pandemic, even here, even amidst a pandemic, because we are held together by a shared truth, that shared truth that Trisha read from the Apostle Paul, that nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us. No matter who you are, no matter how it is you made it to this place, whether you were waiting eagerly for this morning or you just barely made it by the skin of your teeth, no matter what you do or do not believe, no matter what doubts you do or do not hold, no matter how much you feel in your heart that this morning you sure do love Jesus, no matter if the timbers win or lose, they did win last night, we were there, no matter if you have housing at all or more houses than you need, nothing can separate you from the love of God. And this is something we hold together. This is what binds us together. Now, one of the consequences of this is that we are free. We are free to seek goodness in the world. We are free to act for justice, free to be bold, because no matter how hard it is, no matter what happens, no matter what the short-term outcomes are, God's love still binds us. We are free from the fear that things won't turn out all right, because no matter how good or bad it gets, God's love still surrounds us, and that means that all shall be well. I told the first service that I am a short-term pessimist and a long-term optimist. I'm a short-term pessimist and a long-term optimist. I'm the first one to bring up the logistical issues of some wonderful grand vision. And I know that in the end, all shall be well, and we will live into God's good future. There is no other power other than God's that can affect our lives, that can affect our world in any other than a temporary way. That means that our work for compassion, our work for grace, our work for justice is not for naught. Whatever might happen to us, whatever might push us to think, oh no, God, God is not here, or God must be punishing me, or God must have rejected me. Whatever happens to make us think these things, that is not the reality because nothing, nothing the Apostle Paul says can separate us from the love of God. God is here as God always has been. Maybe not waving a magic wand as we would often like them to do, but instead simply present with us. We are starting a new year, a new fall, my first fall here, and we are making room. We're making room for learning and for unlearning. We are making room to remember the good things that we used to do. You remember those things three years ago that we used to do? Both the good things that we can remember and then leave in the past, as well as the good things that we can remember and bring with us into the future. This is our shared reality. Now, in order to have a shared reality, we have to make room for this shared world, setting aside the world of I, setting aside the world of me. We have to decide, what does that shared world look like for us, for First Church? Who is welcome? And how will we make that known? How will we make that known? As we do enter into the fall and our church 
transitions out of being a storage facility and back into a dynamic gathering place once more, we have the opportunity to do some fall cleaning. Slowly but surely, you see signs of it all around campus. The church office has a little bit less clutter these days. The grounds are looking incredible. But what about our spirits? What about our programs? What about our tasks, our to-dos, our focuses, our vision? We might need to do some fall cleaning of these as well. Because we believe that we can live into a shared world together. Today, we have new members joining with us, and they will change the life of our church. Each person present here changes the life of this church. That's what it means to live in a shared world. You don't just join up with First Church. First Church joins up with you as well. And that means each one of us is also on the hook for this shared world that we steward. This shared world where strangers at a departure gate can belong to one another. Where amidst our distress and our inconvenience, we can see one another in common belovedness and we can act out of that vision. Now for us as Christians, the shared world is such because the love of God binds us together. We aspire to be this church, this community, not out of fear of condemnation or judgment or out of a sense that we're not doing enough or being enough. Those are powerful tools. They are, but they're not the ones that we use here. No, instead, we aspire to be the church out of a deep feeling of gratitude to God and to God's love. May we create this shared world together. Amen. I promise we usually stand during the middle hymn. I'm not sure what happened there, but we will get it right next week. <laughs> Friends, as we continue to the respond to the God whom we have met in worship this day, 
We enter now into the time in our service in which we respond with our gifts, tithes, and offerings. For those of us worshiping here in the sanctuary and online, there are a number of ways, a get, ways to give listed on the screen behind me, uh, including online. You can even uh, pull out your cell phone at this moment and go to our website and hit the Give tab. Uh, we will let you look at your phone in church. Um, but also, the offering plate is in the back for your use on the way out of the sanctuary. As we prepare our hearts and minds, let us enter into prayer together. God of us all, you have called us here to this place. Whether it's our first time or whether we have lost track of the number of times we've walked through these doors, we care about you, about your love, about doing love and justice in the world. And we care about doing so in this community. And so out of that care, help us to give of ourselves in these moments, our time, our talents, and particularly our resources. Bless our gifts, tithes, and offerings this day. In the name of the Christ whom we follow, we pray. Amen.
did. At this time, I would like to invite all those who will be joining us for membership up to the chancel or down to the lower chancel. <laughs> I see you there. If you all want to stand on this side over here. We are thrilled to be able to welcome you in membership. You may recognize most of these folks because they've all been with us longer than I have. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I almost didn't recognize Donna this morning because I was like, no, that's not the new member. She's been here forever. Um, no, no. These folks are already a fixture in our community, already so involved with the life of the church, already in our prayers, and we are so excited to be able to make this official step with you all. So I will ask a few questions, and then Pastor Ethan will lead the congregation in responding to you. We'll give an introduction of each of you to the congregation, and then afterwards, after the benediction and the postlude and the video, you'll be able to welcome them in the narthex with us. So my friends, will you join with us to follow the model of Jesus, to bring love and justice to all of God's creation, to love the powerless and the powerful, to seek to bring wholeness to all of humanity? Will you join with us and with the United Methodist Church to explore questions of Christian faith through the Wesleyan perspective, combining personal holiness and social justice. Will you join with us in support of this community of faith through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, so that together we may grow stronger in expressing God's love for all of creation? And my friends, you aren't off the hook. Will you join with these persons to learn from them and learn with them, growing in the expression of our Christian faith and affirming the presence of God's grace encompassing us all? We give we thanks, thanks for you, you and, we and we recognize you as, you as our partners, partners on the journey of faith. faith. We, we will, will learn, learn from you and learn with you. With Together with you, we will bring our prayers, our, our presence, our, our gifts, our service, and our witness to build up this community and to share God's love for all. Amen. Pastor Ethan has some gifts for you, and I'm just going to introduce you by name if you want to give a wave to the congregation. So first we have Stella. You want to wave? You don't have to. Just a little wave. It's okay. And Mary Ann Terpstra. And then we have Dave and Barbara David. Oh, that was, that's Dave and Barbara. This is Donna and Kurt. Kirk is in the choir. Donna goes with them. They will be with us in the back. You will be able to greet them by name and to get to know them more. So thank you all. For the hymn and benediction and video, you can just sit in the front pew. Thank you.
my friends, you are invited, you are invited, there we are, uh, to join us in Collins Hall after the postlude and after the video for an extended coffee hour where you will learn all about different ministries of the church. You'll get to sign up for the pastor's Bible study that I know everyone is excited for. So make sure you sit through the next few items that we have. And after that, you can go from this place receiving this blessing that you may go in the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen.